If you're not familiar with Phil DeFranco, he has one of the largest news update shows on YouTube. He has grown his channel from something of a nothing burger about a decade or so ago to one of the very competitive channels with major cable news shows. In fact, he doesn't just compete with them in viewership. In a lot of cases, he beats their numbers, and he's often looked at as an alternative to mainstream news. He's been a critic of mainstream news in the past, and often, actually, he's been a critic of censorship on YouTube, which is... Kind of why I'm doing this video, because unfortunately in one of his recent videos about the election, I believe DeFranco was calling for censorship. He would say a lockdown on, quote, misinformation. But I really think the line between censorship and just booting misinformation is a very thin one. And when you start treading in the murky waters of one... It's not long after until you are now treading in the open oceans of censorship. So that's what this video is about. I frankly have been quite an admirer of Phil DeFranco's over the years as somebody who came from mainstream news, wanted to start her own alternative news channel. I've picked up a lot of tips from DeFranco. I'm really grateful for the trailblazing he's done in the industry. And so this really isn't an insult video. This is a, hey, Phil, you often ask your viewers what they think in your videos. Where I pass the question off to you, what are your thoughts regarding everything we've been seeing? So Phil, I'm going to take you up on the challenge. Here are my thoughts. Thanks for asking. Now, if you are new to the channel, I'm Allison Morrow. I quit my TV news career back in 2019. I do a lot of free speech, censorship, news analysis stuff on this channel because that is my background. If you are not new to this channel and you've been subscribed for a while, maybe you just forgot who I am because I've been gone for about a week. We got to take a nice family vacation, a rare one in this COVID world so that our first child can meet her grandparents. And it was totally wonderful. And in a lot of ways, thanks to the support that you all have given this channel, not only for me to continue producing content, but to take needed breaks every once in a while to just recenter myself so I can come back on here and talk logic and facts and not just be hysterical because I am swimming in the obsession of all the craziness that is happening around us. That is certainly something that is possible in today's world, but this was a nice break for us. So thank you to everybody who has been supporting my channel on Patreon, PayPal. It's been like sharing, subscribing. It all really helps. There are links in the description if you'd like to continue doing that. But again, just make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Give me some feedback in the comment section. Don't forget to like and obviously share this content really does help because the topic today, as often is on this channel, is censorship. And like I said, Phil DeFranco, unfortunately, I believe has been calling for that in one of his recent videos on the election. Now, again, he'll say that he's talking about a lockdown on what would be misinformation, not just a difference in opinion. But as I've said before in previous videos, the difference between one person's misinformation and another person's difference in opinion often is a subjective call and Phil has been a critic of YouTube's decisions in this regard and so it really was bewildering for me to see him talk about this in his latest video especially as somebody who has been able to use the freedom of the platform of YouTube to grow a really respectable sized channel critiquing sort of the establishment in some cases and that if there were people that were you know as big as he is now back then that were saying, hey, this guy's spreading misinformation and lock him down, maybe he wouldn't have been able to get to where he is today. So I'm going to show you a few clips and we're going to talk about them. Again, I just want to reiterate here, I'd like to discuss this topic and I'd like to hear what you think about this because it definitely is a hot topic right now. Where do you draw the line? Obviously, I've done videos on Section 230 and the freedoms that these platforms have. And as they've been taking actions to lock down what they're identifying as misinformation, a lot of people have said that it really has, in some cases, political bias to it, or it has sort of unfairness when it comes to kind of the little guy or the little gal, and that if we continue to allow it to go in this direction, that eventually we're just going to be run by Silicon Valley overlords. There are other people who say, leave them alone, because if you start tinkering with it, then you're going to make it worse. Love to hear what you think in the comment section, but let's get to this first video. Media said Joe Biden's president. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so that's Kenneth Copeland, and if you're not familiar, he's a televangelist. So that's how Phil starts his video that is titled, Ridiculous, YouTube is failing you, election misinformation thriving. And then he talks about the COVID-19 vaccine made by Pfizer. We're not talking about that. We're just going to talk about the election misinformation part of it. He starts this video in a way that I find is very common for people to start their arguments for censorship. It's like, look at this creepy, terrible thing. You really want this to be allowed? 
If you let these creepy, terrible things out there, what are people going to do? They're going to start acting creepy and terrible. And I think it's not only a bad way to argue your point, no matter what your point is, by preying on people's fears and using worst case scenarios to argue for what the mainstream protocol should be. But I also think it actually gets you the exact opposite of what a lot of people calling for censorship think they're going to get. You lock ideas underground. They don't just go away. There's a lot of people out there who think like you just remove it from these platforms and people just stop thinking them. In fact, I think it's just the opposite. And that in a lot of cases, not just with the election, but we've seen this with COVID-19, there are really fairly debatable ideas and facts that should be allowed to be out there for people to sort of hear different sides on, but we've seen them get locked down as conspiracies or sort of dangerous ideas. They have actually been at the center of some of the most significant election misinformation criticisms. In the days following the election, numerous outlets have reported that it's been shockingly easy to find misleading and downright false information on the platform. All right, let's just say that we agree with the premise that it is shockingly easy to find misinformation on YouTube. So, like, what is the danger there? I mean, I know this is where a lot of people will go like, yeah, but why would you want this to be on YouTube? Why would you want dangerous, shocking information to be on YouTube? Well, here's the thing. The opposite of that is Silicon Valley deciding what is shockingly easy to find misinformation or dangerous misinformation, and then possibly labeling something that's really important someday that questions the establishment, and then getting rid of that. So to me, I've said this in prior videos, the risk of the good information being lost and censored by these oligarchs is a far greater risk than allowing this misinformation that they've labeled to be out there in regards to the election. Oh, I could just hear this video being suppressed by YouTube right now. <laughs> Please share this video if you can. Interestingly says, in the end, basically, I'm critiquing YouTube, so they're probably gonna suppress this video, so please share this video. So is it just me, or is he basically saying that he's nervous YouTube is going to censor him, so he needs you to share his video, and by virtue of doing so, is now arguing against censorship in a video for censorship? And once again, I wanna reiterate this because I think there are gonna be people that push back against an argument I am not making. Yes, I am one of the people who is pushing back on the argument that you are, in fact, making. I'm not talking about a crackdown on people who have different opinions. I'm not talking about a crackdown on people who are saying maybe something offensive. I'm talking about people who are spreading and effectively spreading misinformation and lies. Who gets to determine what is misinformation and lie versus what is just a difference of opinion? Obviously the people in power are the ones that make that decision. It's not a democratic vote about what is one versus what is the other. And so when we're handing that off to the oligarchs, especially in Silicon Valley or even the people in Washington, DC, you really think that it's always going to err on the side of truth and freedom? No, a lot of people will make the argument, and I've made it in the past, that censorship protects the establishment. It protects establishment ideology and the current power structure. And as somebody who has been able to build up a platform critiquing that, why, Phil, why are you arguing for this? This isn't a difference of opinion conversation or debate. This is a difference of reality conversation. And YouTube, by allowing this to spread without any significant warning, you are complicit. Again, this is an argument people will make often when it comes to censorship, that this isn't about a difference of opinion. Of course, I'll allow people with different opinions to be here. This is about differences of reality. And YouTube, you're complicit with these disillusioned people if you allow this to continue. Once again, who decides what is reality? versus what is opinion. But ultimately, that is where we are with this story. We're gonna have to keep our eyes on how social media companies handle this misinformation, which, once again, is important in the now because there is a fire hose of misinformation. It seems like Phil's main beef with YouTube is that it has the same flag under every video about the election, which says that the AP has called it for Biden, and if you want more information to click that link, he seems to want an extra level of differentiation between what YouTube would consider to be lies or misinformation versus the videos which are talking about the election with facts. And again, who gets to make the determination about what's a lie, what's a difference of opinion, what's the truth, what's misinformation? Well, we're going to put that in the hands of Silicon Valley once again and as somebody who has faced the consequences of that. Phil, I'm surprised that you made that video, but I'm going to pose the question back to you about my video now. 
What do you think? I'd love to hear from you. And for those of you who have watched this video, what do you think? I get the pushback on this topic all the time, but don't you understand the potential dangers of people being able to access all kinds of information on the internet? Don't you know where this could lead us? Please, somebody tell me where does this lead us? And if we did lock it down, what's the alternative risk? Let's have a fair debate about it in the comment section. Love to hear from you. Again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave me some feedback. Again, there are links to the description for how you can support my work, and I will see you next time.